I'm Michaela Goose and you are watching NTTV's Online Report. Russian cyber attackers are attacking organizations that are involved in developing the COVID-19 vaccine and that is according to security officials in the US, UK and Canada. In May, the three countries issued an advisory warning of ongoing cyber attacks against organizations involved in the coronavirus response. Officials say hospitals, research laboratories, healthcare providers, and pharmaceutical companies have all been hit. Today, the government detailed activity by a Russian hacking group called Apt29, which also goes by the name The Dukes or Cozy Bear. Cozy Bear is one of the hacking groups linked to Russia that's believed to have interfered in the 2016 U.S. election. But today's announcement is the first time this group has been connected to cyber attacks related to the coronavirus pandemic. The UK's lead technical authority said of App29, they almost certainly operate as part of Russia intelligence services. And coronavirus related deaths are continuing to surge in South Central Texas. And with many hospital morgues at full capacity and the postponement of many funerals due to social distancing guidelines, refrigerated trailers are necessary. In Behar County, two refrigerated trailers are already operational and three more will be set up by the end of the week. Mario Martinez, assistant director of the local health department, says it underscores the severity of COVID-19 and people need to take this virus seriously. These individuals are our family members and, and friends and we can't emphasize enough the, the precaution measures that we've stated before and will repeat again that wearing the face covering, it does work. Since the pandemic began in March, more than 200 people have died of COVID-19 in Bihar County, which does include San Antonio. Now the U.S. recorded more than 67,000 new cases of the coronavirus on Tuesday, breaking the record for the number of new cases reported in the U.S. in a single day. Now Camila Bernal has a look at what's being done around the country to address this virus. Around the country, health experts asking Americans to be responsible. The challenge that we had is that people have not been masking and being socially distant. This as coronavirus cases hit a new nationwide record for cases reported in a single day. At least 27 states have paused or rolled back plans to reopen their economies. The Senate Majority Leader telling his constituents that this is not over. It's pretty obvious. The coronavirus is not going away. We've seen a surge in Florida and Arizona and Texas and yes, in Kentucky as well. The senator also saying it will take a while to get a vaccine, even as attempts to develop a coronavirus vaccine are showing promising safety and immune response results. I do think there's progress on both the therapeutics and the vaccine front. But we're still going to have to observe social distancing. We're still going to have to wear masks. Precautions because a new model from the University of Washington is projecting that 224,000 Americans will have died from the virus by November 1st, an increase of 16,000 from their projections just a week ago. That jump attributed to the skyrocketing cases around the country, specifically in states like California, Texas, and Florida. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. As national COVID-19 numbers approach 3.5 million cases and over 136,000 deaths within the United States, the Metroplex is still seeing a dramatic rise in COVID-19 cases. Dallas County is reporting just over 1,000 new cases. Tarrant County reported over 850 new COVID cases. Denton County reported over 150, while Collin County reported more than 130 new cases. Now, NTTV's news director, Seth Biley, spoke with Jennifer Rainey, the public relations officer for Denton County Public Health, and she explained the importance of understanding the rise in case numbers and the rise in percent positivity, which shows a clear rise in COVID-19 cases. So definitely looking at the, the number of new cases per day, we are seeing that rising. Something that is um, often kind of justifiable with, with individuals is, ah, but that's because of new testing. Um, that is correct. More testing does have uh, does create higher 
um, a higher number of new cases. And so we also recommend individuals take a look at our, scrolling down to it, uh, take a look at our weekly percent positivity. So what that weekly percent positivity is, is the, it takes the number of tests performed total, all of the number of tests performed within Denton County, and, um, and, and it takes the number of, of positive cases out of those new tests performed. So that's a, a much better indicator, and that's you know per 100 tests performed, are we getting two tests positive per 100, or are we getting 12 tests positive per 100? We didn't start tracking weekly percent positivity um, until I believe it was mid to late April, it's like April 26. So we do have a little bit of limited data, um, but we've kind of varied. We stayed around the 4.5 to 4.3, 3.9 um, for the solid month of May. So that percent positivity was pretty steady, um, but it slowly started to creep back up. It's um, the beginning of June was 7.8, and the most recent week we're now at 11.3%. Uh, positivity, which means that out of 100 cases, 11.3% of those are testing positive. Georgia's governor is facing some heat from, a, from some of his state's mayors over his order that blocks cities and counties from mandating face masks in public. Governor Brian Kemp says he strongly encourages people wear masks, but he won't require them. Atlanta's mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, had mandated masks and her office says it remains in effect even though technically Kemp's executive order now voids that. Savannah's mayor, Van Johnson, had also issued a mask mandate. He tweeted, Governor Kemp does not give a damn about us. Kemp did extend the measure that recommends people socially distance and that people with health problems stay home if possible. The governor has faced criticism for his handling of the state's coronavirus response. He was among the last of the governors in the United States to sign a stay at home order, as well as one of the first governors to reopen business after that shelter in place order did expire. Another 1.3 million Americans filed first time jobless claims this week. Those numbers were released by the Labor Department this morning. It comes nearly four months after the coronavirus pandemic started wreaking havoc on the economy. Weekly first-time unemployment applications hit their peak in the last week of March. Since then, those applications have been on the decline for more than three months, but unemployment is still high. Continued claims were at more than 17.3 million for the week, ending July 4th, down 422,000 from the previous week. Continued claims are people who have filed claims for at least two weeks in a row. June's unemployment rate was 11.1%, the highest it has been since World War II. While jobless numbers do remain high, the U.S. government reports retail sales rose for the second month in a row as shoppers trickled back into stores amid the coronavirus pandemic. Retail sales rose 7.5% in June over May. Analysts have cautioned the recovery could be short-lived if consumers become less willing to spend on discretionary items like clothing, especially as the jobless claims continue to rise. Meanwhile, the additional $600 a week additional unemployment benefits are set to end at the end of this month. Now, with all the terrible news every day for our last story, we would like to take you out of this world. NASA and the European Space Agency released the closest image ever taken of the sun today. The new Solar Orbiter mission, which launched in February, captured the images last month. Among other things, they showed small solar flares, which are actually called campfires, near the sun's surface. This was the Solar Orbiter's first close pass of the sun. Now the word close is relative here. The images were taken at a distance of more than 47 million miles from the sun. All 10 of the solar orbiter's instruments were turned on for the first time together during this pass, and researchers were impressed by the amount of detail that can be seen in these images. That's all we have for you guys tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at NTTV underscore news for all the latest updates. And be sure to join us again next week on NTTV's online report. Have a wonderful weekend.